Okay, I'm going to prepare my web page and give some thought to how big I want my image to be. Now, we don't always have the luxury of knowing exactly how big we're going to want to make this image, but in this particular case, I know that this particular box is going to be filled with that image. In this particular case, I can see that it is 45% wide or 419 pixels, and I probably want to make it um, a definite 420 pixels or 425. So instead of relying on percentages of my web page, because it can get really weird if you've got this image that's really large, but the box itself is only a certain percentage of the entire web page. So I want to kind of force that to happen just to make sure that I'm okay on that. I know from having looked at this, let me pull it back here. If I click in here that I can see down here that that's my right banner div. I'm going to come over here to my right banner and I'm going to change that to 425 pixels. I need to obviously make sure that it's pixels and not percentage. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And in terms of height, you know, you can really do anything you want in terms of height. These two particular boxes are are governed height-wise by their content inside of them. But later on, we could also spe specify what exactly their height level is going to be. For the moment, I'm going to leave them alone. I'm going to minimize that. Now, I've come to a website um, that's off of your instructional page. And this is education quotes. You may certainly use any quote that you want under any category, or you don't even have to do a quote. You, you might have something else that you have in mind. But I've gone ahead and selected a, uh, an education quote called, Education is not the filling of the pail, but the lighting of a fire. Now, I have copied and pasted that right here into a notepad, just because I want to get plain, simple text. I don't want to pick up any web stuff that's coming in from the page, so I'm just going to copy and paste that there. So the next thing I'm going to do is come in here to Photoshop, and I'm going to do a file new, blank file, and I'm going to call it Fire, and in terms of its width and height, I want to go a little bit larger than I what I think I want it to be. I know that my overall size is going to be, I believe, 420, I think I set, but 450 is okay, 200 is okay here. And my resolution is 72 pixels per inch. That's appropriate for a web page graphic. If I wanted to go to a print or if I wanted to do something else with this graphic, I'd probably go much higher. Printing starts around 300 for a low-end print or a smaller print, 600 and higher, 1200 and higher. All of those are print resolutions. And for a web page, a 72 uh, is, is fine. Now, the thing that is also available right here off of this menu is I could choose to make the background contents um, transparent. I'm going to go ahead and make it white. Now I can change that later on and make something transparent, but from a design perspective I find that it's just as easy to work off of a white background. Or if you know that your, your text is going to be something very particular, you might choose a color background color that you would want um, special to your particular piece, right? So in this particular case, I've chosen white, and notice here that it's automatically left me with a background that is white. Some of the tricks on the keyboard, I can do a control plus to zoom in, or I can do a control minus to zoom out, or obviously I can go up to view and I can do fit on screen, which is the control zero, and that's the one I usually like to use. Now in terms of all of the Photoshop products and many of the modern design products, they all work in the notion of a layer, and the layers you can think of as clear acetate, those things that you would make real old-fashioned transparencies on. And the idea here is that you're going to place on each separate transparency a design element that is the only piece on that particular page so that as you build these transparencies together and layer them the entire thing shows up but then because they're on separate layers you can either take something out by simply hiding it or you can change just a particular layer so that you have a lot of flexibility left in the end. So I'm not going to touch my background layer. I want to immediately start by making a new layer. I can do that down here under my create a new layer icon or I can come up here to where it says view, excuse me, layer and do new layer. 
Okay. And now I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to do a quick phrase that's going to help me remember what this layer is. I'm going to click OK. Now notice here it says education is not. That's going to be this layer and my background layer is here. Notice my education is not is a transparent layer. If I were to use my eye indicator here and turn that off, I could see that, that it would change over to this transparent uh, background, which is fine. We may be able to use that later on. But by having the white layer on now, or whatever color you've chosen, it allows you to see what you're doing at any given time. Now, in terms of Photoshop and its tools, I always like to think of these tools up here, my Move tool and my Hand tool as kind of my home base so that whenever I do something on a particular layer I tend to go do the layer or do the elements and then come back here to generally speaking my move tool and um, that again is my mental home base for wherever I am in this particular case we are going to and by the way before I move on when I've clicked on to my move layer make sure it says or checked off to auto select layer show the bounding box and show highlight on rollovers that just gives you some visuals to know where your layer is what your content in on that layer is etc right I'm gonna to go to my text tool over here on the left hand side now I want to make some choices right from the get-go it's going to just make my life a lot easier I've gone ahead and installed two fonts one of them is called life lessons and I've also gone ahead and uh, selected a color, but I, of course I can select any color I would want. I'm going to do dark red orange, or I could certainly do this. I'm going to try to evoke something that has something to do with fire here. And of course I could select my font size, and I'm going to start out with a smaller one simply because I don't want it to run all over the page and I'm going to all, um, type in or actually I'm going to go ahead and paste the education portion that I've already copied and pasted now I could certainly simply type it in and that would be fine now the one thing you need to see is that as I've done that this little green check mark is available and it basically is asking me to check that to commit any current changes now depending on what version of Photoshop you have you might see this little check mark up here on this border or you could actually see it down here in the actual um, line of, of text itself so it, make sure you look for it because you'll need to commit that change before it will accept anything but I can see that there I'm gonna go ahead and choose a uh, faux bold just to see what that's going to look like and I'm also going to pop the um, size up a little bit and I'm going to click in this line and hit enter so that it actually splits across two lines. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to go a little bit bigger here and maybe even a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to pop back to my move tool so that I can actually get it in place here. Now quite frankly once it's in place here I can see that I don't really really like the faux bold on here so I'm gonna go back to my text tool over here I'm gonna highlight it once again and I'm gonna turn off that faux bold piece so now it's looking a little bit better but quite frankly I wasn't happy with that color either so I'm gonna actually go radically different and go um, I'm gonna go gray for the moment I think that eventually this will be on a black background which means that probably gray is not the the choice of color that I would end up having but for the moment I'm going to leave it this way to play with it I can also play with my letting which is my distances here and uh, change that and what that's doing is that's um, changing the letting between the two lines there in this particular case so I've written in my little text piece here on my one layer and this is pretty straightforward actually I'm even gonna go back and change the whole thing to a black just so we can see it there okay now 
<clears throat> there's a couple of other things I can do, but I do want to commit those changes there. And I can also pop over to these styles, which are a lot of fun. So that if you have a, a particular style that you want to choose, note that you can also expand those out and you'll get other styles. So that if you wanted uh, something wild and funky, if you wanted to play around with glass buttons, you could do that. Now the one thing that you need to know, of course, is that as you layer on these styles, um, you're better off simply undoing a particular piece and um, then starting with a different style. So let me just show you that. For example, here.